Hey, everybody, Stephen Rock with you to talk about the hopes for a 2020 baseball season. Fingers are crossed, toes are crossed, not pictured. So, Rock, <laughs> and, and you just said before we started taping, you made a great point about the emotions, the up and down nature of this that a Twitter world kind of brings about. Yeah, it's, all, it's a roller coaster. I take a Dramamine every morning to make sure I don't get nauseous from the motion of the up and down. I mean, it's, and it sounds weird coming from somebody who's with the media, but I feel like the media needs to like ease up a little bit on this coverage because that's what's putting us on the roller coaster. I, I think that whoever's, and it's not just one person, but whoever's leaking this information out isn't helping the process at all. And, you know, an example was recently where we, we saw some reports in a morning about how it seems like there's more optimism now, the sides are getting closer. Well, this was before the owners submitted their latest proposal to players who rejected it hard. <laughs> it was like a hard no. Like there wasn't even a reason to respond to it. So then we, in the morning, we're up here, and then we go back down later on, and it's like maybe we shouldn't have gone up this way at 10 in the morning or whatever it was with these, the sides are getting closer if the players hadn't even seen the proposal yet. So I, I, again, maybe I'm just very naive. I still think it gets done. I, I'm holding out hopes. I'm sure you are that both sides recognize the importance of playing even 82 games and what a detriment it would be if they don't have a season and the damage done and what that could mean in 2021. And you've got, you know, and you need a new labor agreement. There's just a lot of bad that can come out of not getting this done. And I almost feel like you really don't have much of a choice. You've got to figure this out. And I think eventually they will. Baseball's in a unique spot. I keep hearing comparisons with the NHL and the NBA are able to start back up. Well, they already ha were having their seasons when this happened. The NFL was anywhere near their season starting. Baseball is the unique one. They were finishing up spring training and ready to start a season. So it's a little hard to compare to, well, look what the NBA and the NHL are able to do. They're, basically, they could just start the playoffs now. Yes. <laughs> Baseball is in a whole si different situation. So it's not easy, but it's got to get done. And I still think it will. Good point about baseball. To me, it's the hardest hit of the four sports. NBA and NHL had approximately 80 to 85% of their season done. The MLB equivalent rock is like 138 games. Right. Now, in those seasons, players got paid and owners got revenue. So if baseball were on at August 30th when this happened, with 138 games in, and most people got their money both sides, it, this discussion wouldn't be happening. Football doesn't start until September, has many fewer games, and generates a larger percentage, a much larger from television, and less from gate receipts. So they're less impacted by no fans, in my opinion, without having the numbers spread in front of me. Baseball, this happened right at the start of the season. It just was right. uh, the timing for this particular sport was the toughest. It was. And that's why, again, every time I hear comparisons of what other sports are doing, it's really not a fair comparison. Baseball was in a really odd spot. And it's funny because I still talk to people, and I'm sure we felt the same way too. When we were sent home, what was that, the 14th of March, did we ever imagine that going into June we'd still be in a situation where we didn't even know if there was going to be a season? And certainly it'd be at least a month away. Uh, I don't think any of us anticipated that. We just didn't know at the time. We, you know, this is uncharted territory. We were basically quietly complaining because we knew there was, it was serious, but we were basically quietly complaining about being inconvenienced, about having to go outside to do our interviews. What? We're not allowed in the clubhouse? You know, I had players ask me, do you think they're overreacting, you know, when they were shutting down spring training? Man, maybe they are. And then now you step back and you're like, wow, yeah, <laughs> what we wouldn't give to be able to step outside to interview some players or have to reach with our recorders to interview Brandon Hyde from a safe distance. You know, now, now we may not even get the opportunity to do that. We, we didn't know how good we had it before the 14th. If they get a season going, everybody will love the ability to watch games on television, which will be there. What you and I don't know, and it's selfish interest for us, it doesn't involve all the fans, is the ability to go cover a game. Will that be granted us even for home games? We don't know that yet. Nothing's been announced or decided. And they're in, within our media uh, inner circle, there seems to be a lot of debate on that and dissent, di different opinions. Yeah. I mean, the BBWAA will fight back hard, I'm sure, if we're told that we don't have any access 
to manager players at home games. I think people are braced for no travel, uh, but I think they feel like, look, we should at least be able to go to our home ballparks and cover the team the way we were toward the end of spring training. You have to space out the press box, obviously. We understand no clubhouse access. That's fine. I doubt that the auxiliary clubhouse would be open to us. Usually that's where we have our pre- and post-game sessions with Brandon Hyde. Probably that's going to be needed for other players to use as, as a clubhouse because you can have overflow now if you're trying to space guys out in the clubhouse, the home side. But there's got to be you know, some area where you could go ahead and have all of us gather from a safe distance, whether or not we're wearing masks. You know, there, there should be a way to do that. You would think, but again, if, if Major League Baseball feels like that's even a risk, then it's, it's not going to happen. I, I seriously doubt we'll be traveling. I would think maybe we could at least get to the home ballparks, but that's not guaranteed. And I don't know whether we're going to be allowed to talk to, to manager and players or if it's going to be a Zoom season where we're just going to have to, when it get laugh for right. the last out, we head to our laptops and, and wait for Brandon and for some players on a Zoom conference call and just cover the team differently. Uh, there's a chance that, you know, broadcasters doing the games, the road games might be doing them from the studio instead of live at the visiting ballparks. Uh, right. It's this going to be a different season and we're going to have to adjust to it. And I'm sure fans will just be happy to have baseball. And if we're not able to be in person and getting quotes face to face with everybody, they'll understand that. But uh, I'm sure it's going to ruffle a few feathers, though, if we're told, look, there's no access even at the home ballparks. If there is a season, some questions are going to come into play that we're not even discussing much now. What we're going to find out about roster. Is it 30? Is there a 20-man taxi squad? Mm -hmm. If it's a total of 50, coincidentally, the Orioles roster is at 50 as camp was halted. Will it be those 50? Those 50 did not include Keegan Aiken and Ryan Mountcastle and some others who we would have assumed in a normal season would have been making their major league debut. If you're the Orioles now, do you say, well, why bother? with creating service time for these guys, or maybe the other viewpoint is they need to play. And if they're not going to be able to play at Norfolk, which they may not, maybe Baltimore is going to be it. Right. And I think that's one of the most interesting things that we're waiting to find out is how that taxi squad's used because a taxi squad for the most part exists because you're trying to keep guys ready to help you at the major league level. I assume to swap players out because pitchers aren't going to be able to log as many innings as they would have normally and you're, you've got to be cautious starting them back up again, ramping back up is a phrase we'll be using a lot. So you want a lot of guys in that taxi squad. I'm just giving examples, the Chandler Shepherds of the world, the Tom Eshelmans, Eshelmans, guys like that who aren't prospects necessarily, but are guys that you can go ahead and plug in when you have relievers that have been used too much, whatever. But at the mm -hmm. same time, I agree with you that you also could use it to give Aiken more time to develop. He's not going to lower his walk total unless he's facing hitters and working on that. Uh, Ryan Mountcastle can increase his walk total <laughs> unless he's facing hitter, you know, facing pitchers and, and getting at bats. So it gives them a chance to at least work out. And it, then you can decide whether you want to start that service clock later or not. These are guys who might still be able to help you late in the year and you want to take a look at them. But you can't just have them sitting at home. Now, I don't know what, how this impacts a Rutschman, for example, who isn't going to make his major league debut this year. So you just shut him down or you also include him on that taxi squad and maybe they play inter squad games in the meantime, where do they play them? Are they at Camden yards or do you, you've got affiliates in Maryland, maybe you send them all to Aberdeen. Like I just don't know. And I don't know even if some of the rules have now changed beyond roster size, like you have pitchers have to stay down 15 days now and you option them but maybe that changes because you're going to need more guys moving up and down. So maybe that's changed to 10 days. Maybe it's changed to eight days because you're trying to protect these guys from getting hurt. We have to f figure all that out. So it's not just about working out how much everyone's going to get paid. Or that seems to be the major issue, but they have to figure out how the season is even going to look right now and what you do with a taxi squad. Getting back to where we started, one thing that could come into play here is the postseason. Uh, that's where a lot of the TV dollars are generated, which will be big for the owner side. And so maybe the players, one thing they can say is we'll take less if it turns out there's a second hit of this virus and we can't have a postseason. That's a big fear within the baseball, which apparently it would lead them to not 
push the regular season into October. We got to get this postseason rolling and get it in before something could eliminate it from happening. So maybe postseason and how that's going to work out is going to be a big part of this resolution. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, again, you have to come up with compromises. You know, as Brokale told me, you have to give to get. So, but they are going to have to figure that out because that would be one of the worst case scenarios is you finally start this thing up and then you have to shut it down again. Uh, they, they, so you're going to have to reach a finish line here. And I don't know, I mean, obviously you can just set, look, we're, we're going to have to end the season on this date for sure. Like, I don't think they want to go into November now, certainly not deep into November just in case. But then may, how, how flexible can you be once the season starts if all of a sudden there's some concerns being raised even in September at some point? Is there a time you just say, all right, season over, who's in the playoffs? However this ends up working out, this is going to also include, obviously, if you keep the divisions the same, it looks like it's just going to be East playing East and the American National League Central playing Central, West and West. Whoever wins the World Series, it's got to be a muted celebration, don't you think? Not just because, obviously, of the severity, pandemic, lives lost and out of respect, but just because... I mean, how much can you celebrate a season like this that it doesn't look anything like a normal season would look? A very limited number of games, different travel. It's like whoever comes through it and wins the whole thing, congratulations. But, I mean, how much do you celebrate something like that? How, what will the first walk-off homer look like? No <laughs> one running to the plate. No one even high-fiving the player runs, touches home plate, and walks and sits down in the dugout. <laughs> and the camera points at him, great job, so-and-so, you just won the game. Exactly. Thanks. I think guys are going to come up with something creative. There'll have to be something kind of like, you know, the no fans game at Camden Yards, where guys were jokingly doing things like, you know, pretending to sign autographs, uh, high-fiving, throwing balls into the stands when there are no fans. I think they'll come up with some kind of celebrations. Maybe it's just a salute from the distance, although you're not supposed to touch your face yet. So you have to be careful about right. that. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Everything's going to look different. There will not be dog piles at home plate. Um, I mean, you're not even allowed to spit. I don't think you're allowed to eat sunflower seeds. You certainly can't chest bump and pie Yikes. people and jump on top of each other. So it's the whole thing is going to be different. You're right. That's another reason that you mute a celebration when the World Series ends. I don't think you're going to be spraying champagne on top of each other and hugging guys. It's just going to be okay. We, we, we did it. We're safe. Everybody keep your distance and let's go back home. I want to know when the labor piece ended in baseball. It seemed like for decades, no work stoppages, no talk of strikes, walkouts, lockouts, replacement players. Everything was good. A lot of money in the game. The industry kept going up $10 billion, $11 billion. And now all of a sudden there's distrust. Not only what we're going through now, but at the end of 2021, the CBA ends. We're going to be right – as soon as this gets resolved, if it does – Months later, it's start on the next one. Right. And then hopefully whatever's going on now doesn't carry over. Right. And I think that's the big concern of why they feel like another big reason they have to resolve this is because of the fallout, if you don't, going into the end of next season and whether you could go ahead and, and have players then that, wanna, that go on strike. And there's a perception, I'm, I, absolutely, in the union that ownership is trying to divide them and trying to break the union and why they're talking about the sliding scale of the guys who make more money having to sacrifice more and what you're doing with the minor leagues now and teams are, you know, shutting them down and not, they're not paying guys. The Orioles have been, are going to pay their guys at least through June. Uh, but there's that, that your that ownership is trying to divide the union right now feeling like, Hey, we, we found a soft spot here and they're attacking it. That's a perception, whether or not that's true. That's how this looks right now. And you better believe that's something that then does carry over to 2021. And, and you know, the last, the last thing this sport needs is another shutdown, and especially if you don't play this year. And you're right. We got a little spoiled by the, the harmony for all these years, and then this happens, and now all the bad blood starts up again. Scott Boris is speaking out on behalf, certainly, of his people, and now you got players speaking out against him. Trevor Bowers, like, look, do what you got to do for your clients, but stay out of our business. Uh, and I think owners are probably just sitting back smiling with their arms folded at that. So you got to present a unified front, and they've got to work this out and kiss and make up and show fans, hey, everything's fine. And in the meantime, they're going to keep trying to tell us it's not just about the money. There are health concerns still and risks. 
it's 99.9% .9 about money, isn't it? I mean, you can't fool us. We know that that's what this is about. And, bo and players don't want to hear the owners boo-hoo about losing money. They're like, really? How, how, how much are you losing? Open the books for us. And they're not going to do that. The word is compromise. You have to give a little. We have to give a little. We meet in the middle somewhere. They can't even seem to agree what middle is. And, right. and how, you know, oh, we're giving more than you're giving. So, I mean, they got to work this out. It's a big pie with a lot of money in it that all sides seem to be happy or can be happy when they get this done. And for the good of the future of the sport, they can't have something go wrong now. And whether we're there or not, it would be great to see baseball on our television screens at the very least. Yeah, might be good for mass and ratings. I mean, a lot of people have to watch the games at home. They do anyway. But now, especially if you can't get to the ballpark. But, you know, you just want some sense of normalcy. And I know it's going to be hard to do with this season, certainly, however it's going to look if they play. But at least to have baseball back, that gives people some distraction and something that they can kind of cling to. They look forward to it so much. It's, it's a comfort to be able to turn on your TV, even if you're not allowed in the ballpark, and see a baseball game again, as long as it's done safely, which I think it can be even if you have to go to real extremes. So I just feel like it's got to get done, and you don't want any repercussions, again, going into next season and at the end of it and having all kinds of unrest and a possible strike or threats and the ugliness. It's like, let's just get this thing done. And there's still some time. There's not like a concrete deadline, but it's got to be pretty soon because you probably sure. need three weeks of spring training, I think, is minimum. Brokel was hoping for four weeks at least. I don't know if they'll have that luxury. But you got to get at least three. Hitters can probably get ready a little easier than pitchers. And even once they start the season, you're not going to have guys working six, seven innings. I mean, it's going to be closer to, hey, can you just give us 60, 65 pitches and try and get us through four and then go to the bullpen, which is why you need to expand the rosters and have a lot of extra pitchers and that taxi squad. It's going to look a lot different. But let's just play baseball however it looks. All right, we didn't solve any problems today, but we discussed a few. <laughs> And hopefully one or two of these videos moving forward will be talking about roster sizes and, and who's going to be in the starting rotation and things like that would be a little more fun to discuss. It would be. Because think of all the, the projections that we were doing back in March. You kind of tear those up now, throw them in the trash. I get asked, like, hey, is it still those same five guys you think in the rotation? I'm like, probably. But, I mean, I, like my bullpen projections, who's on the bench, utility guys. If you're going for, to a 30-man roster – that changes things. If you need extra relievers, maybe they do carry a third catcher. They were open to it when they had a 26-man roster. I didn't think it made sense, but they were open to it. Now you really can be at a 30-man. And again, the taxi squad, you could have guys who are going to be joining the team that we didn't think we would see again. So yeah, we're going to have to completely redo our projections now. Hey, that would be more fun to discuss though. So Rocco, see you next time. Sounds good. Stay safe.